today's stealth camping episode, I find myself in the beautiful town of Collingwood, Ontario, Canada, on the emerald blue shores of Georgian Bay. We're going to be checking out this town by car, walking, and by mountain bike. While I'm checking out the town, I'll be looking for great mom and pop shops to eat at. That's the one right there. Look at it. It's so big, you have to put the eggs on top, right? Of course, that there looks awesome. Go. And also, try and find a great spot to stealth camp for the night. If this stealth camping food adventure sounds like an exciting video that you want to watch, then grab something to eat, sit back, and enjoy this video. So I got to uh, Collingwood yesterday morning at 6 o'clock a.m. because I was helping out a friend, his name is Carl, and he has a television show and uh, it's a fishing show so he needed help with some camera work and uh, so I was available and said I'd help him and uh, we actually came here about a month ago and uh, there was a tornado warning when we were out on the lake. So we had to scrap that shoot, and then today was the rest of the, the two days that we needed to shoot and uh, try to catch some salmon and rainbow trout. And I uh, managed to catch a rainbow trout and a salmon yesterday, or no, two salmon yesterday, and two rainbow trout today, which was freaking awesome. And so we stayed at the uh, Georgian Bay Hotel last night, and uh, we finished our shoot, so Carl's gone home, and I, had this, I decided to stay here in uh, Collingwood, show you guys around and uh, do a stealth camp somewhere tonight. And the gentleman who had the boat, the fishing charter boat, uh, his name was Kevin, and uh, he docks his boat uh, just off this. Um, this is the Harbor Lands Park. So most of yesterday and today we we're out on the on the uh, the bay trying to catch fish and. Uh, as we pass some of this stuff, I thought it'd be kind of cool to show you guys. And after I show you around this pier, which I might sleep at tonight, I'm not sure. I think it's $50 for parking. Um, and they don't talk about stealth camping. So we might stay here. We might find uh, a local street and uh, do our best to stay unnoticed. But again, passing all this stuff, Oh, and that's the other thing too is they have washrooms here too so that would be beneficial so let's park the van and then we'll go for a quick little walk and show you around these, these beautiful piers but this place is absolutely gorgeous got a duck down here the water is so clear Got those really big boats, got the really small boats. There's a fishing trawler at the end. Kevin's is at the end of that one. And uh, got some ski boats and stuff. People don't have cottages or access to water. This is where they dock their boats. Here are the boat launches. The fees between April 1st and October 31st are 10 bucks per day. And you just pay those guys over there in that booth. Two boat launches, which is good. You don't have to wait too long. They got a fish cleaning area. I uh, might not want to look in that bucket. Hmm. Yeah, good thing you didn't look. Got some old historic equipment down here. There's a steam hammer from the 1940s, 1903. It's huge. I wanted to show you these two boats over here. Check out this old tugboat. They look awesome. I love these things. Apparently there's a tugboat in on Vancouver Island that you can, it's like they turned it into a hotel. So the stairs going down. There is somebody in there right now. Beautiful boat. Look at that thing. And there's another little Wild Irish Rose from Toronto and it looks like a little pirate ship.
That thing's pretty cool. I think you go out on the Jolly Roger cruise. Lots of solar panels there and up there. Very nice looking boat. I just love the fact that it looks like a old pirate ship. Two mast. Very nice. Let's go uh, to the very end of the pier. Go check out what's down over there. Looks like an old army jeep. Collingwood Paddling Club. This is the end of the pier. That is the ski hill, Blue Mountain, which is very, very popular during the winter time. And apparently they got some pretty good bike trails and uh, people that love to do downhill with their mountain bike. So they got like a compass here at the end of the pier. It's almost like a sundial. A lot of very cool looking artwork involved in that that's called a uh, griffin Got a dragon over there some fire but uh, they'll put the fishing poles in here cast it way out hoping to catch uh, rainbow trout swimming by apparently they like going up this channel and they've got these throughout the shoreline here very beautiful bay part of Lake Huron but it is so vast and incredible very cool now it's time to go to Bent Taco I've been there once with Paul when we came out here and we did some uh, kayaking to a shipwreck called the Mary Ward and uh, I've been wanting to go back today's day mom and pop shop taco shop let's do it just looked it up Ben Taco on Wednesdays isn't open until 5 p.m. It is only 3 p.m. So we've got two hours before we can order our tacos. So I'm gonna go and drive to like the little downtown area of Collingwood. And uh, from there we can just take a little walk around, possibly seek out a stealth camp spot. So there is Ben Taco off to our right. So we'll come back here at five. Uh, I just remember I still haven't had my coffee for today and I do not want to start getting that caffeine headache. And earlier on when I was driving around, I noticed that there was like a little mom and pop coffee shop just around the corner from here. So this is one of those pretty little Ontario towns. Got the big bell tower there. A lot of cool shops and businesses. Look at this old building. Looks phenomenal. They got Chinese food. The shopping stuff. We got clothing. There's a cafe here. I'm looking for coffee. A chocolatier. Mmm. Sushi. Ooh, a Caesar bar. Who wants to see me do a video there? Leave a comment in the comment section below. That would be awesome. Bring Paul. Looks like an old barber shop. They have the old barber's pole there, chair, cutting utensils from a long time ago. It's like it's like a barber shop at the same time as in a museum because they've got some pretty old stuff in there. Very neat. I asked a local and she said down here, it looks like the espresso post. Ooh, they got some 
yummy stuff. Whoops. That's gonna go for an Americano or latte. Latte large. How are you? Very good. How are you? All right. Uh, I'd love to try a latte, please, large. That's a good experiment. Definitely. To go. Uh, I'm going to actually enjoy it here, sir. Ooh, okay. And, and I'm going to do one of your chocolate chip cookies. They look awesome. Mm -hmm. This one looks awesome. Yes, that one. <laughs> That's the one right there. Look at it. How long has your shop been here? It looks like it's been here a long time. Long enough, yeah. 19 years. Holy cow. Congratulations. Street Parade, July 1st, 1914. Is that in the direction of this place? Do you think? Uh, the one with the archways, the building, to the left, go down the street, past this building. Very cool. There used to be the post office. Used to be a post office here? Wow. Oh, look at that. Very nice. Thank you. There's my latte and cookie. Did a very nice job on that latte. Interesting, I've never had a latte in a plastic cup. I guess I don't want breakage outside. Look at that chunky chocolate. Let's give that a shot first. Oh, nice and soft. That's a good latte. I picked the right place. Thank you, that latte was awesome. Thank you very much. And on that far table, like the whole time I was sitting at that table, there's been a, a phone and an iPad just sitting on that far right table. Okay. And nobody's sat there the whole time I've been here. Okay. So Maybe somebody's left it. And I'm thinking if you bring it in, they'll probably come and ask you and then you'll be their, he you'll be their hero. <laughs> I'd want somebody to do the same thing for me. Somebody left their phone and iPad over there. Just wanna make sure they get it back. you offered a drink um well we do margaritas to go yeah I can but you're, you're probably driving in car yeah so i'm gonna say have you tried the um cherry cola from that brand that brand? no let me try that it's one it's really good I cherry don't cola it. yeah got it it's black cherry so it's like not too sweet but it's really unique very cool i'll do one of those for you i think that'll right. be it <laughs> okay so five o'clock sure so they actually have a take out menu apparently you can ask the staff for like what I'm ordering, because she said they don't tech, uh, usually do the fish tacos because by the time people get them home, they're very mushy and uh, the, the whole experience of eating it later is not a good experience. So she says, as long as you understand that or as long as you're gonna eat it as soon as you get it for takeout, I just don't wanna eat in there today. Uh, I wanna eat in the car and this is a stealth camp video. So we did the coffee and a little walk around, which was fine. But uh, so she was extremely nice and helped me out. She says, I'll even put the order in for you right now, which is amazing. Bent taco, you guys rock. I cannot wait to do these tacos again. I was here with Paul a mm, couple years ago and uh, but I'm gonna find a better parking spot because I'm kind of like right in the the main area and uh, there's a barber shop right there and people are gonna be walking by I don't want to bug people let's move the car thank you just on top there. perfect Would you like any napkins if you're gonna eat no there? I've got some out okay. in the car thanks thank you. thanks for all your help no let's go eat Gotta eat the t fish one first. All right, guys, we are back in the car. Let's get out the trusty steering wheel tray and start eating, shall we? So we're in Rusty, the Rusty Stealth Camp van, and I decided to put the camera over here. So every once in a while, I might look up there. That's why I to try something different since we did it in the uh, the Sprinter van. Put out our napkin and our placemat. Let's get this drink. 
Might be able to utilize this bag for something else. She uh, talked me into the black cherry. Should be a twist off. There we go. Oh, I also had my camper opener. Cheers, guys. You could really smell that cherry as soon as you got close to the, the nose. Uh, ooh, that looks fantabulous. All right, guys, going in for the extreme close-up of this amazing meal here at Bent Taco in Collingwood, Ontario. There is our cauliflower bestseller, she said. Then the meat and potatoes, trying to get as close as I can without going all blurry. And there is our chicken tinga. That looks delicious. I think that's what I had with Paul. And then one of us had the fish taco. I remember it being very, very good. And that's the Baja fish taco. And there is our sweaty cola. Look at that, freezing cold in this hot car. She says, you gotta eat that fish tacos quickly. These are on the flour tortillas. I prefer um, the corn tortillas, but flour is uh, pretty good too. Oh, okay, go ahead, scratch it, sniff it. The rest is mine. Mmm. Mm-hmm. I always like to ask you guys, what do you prefer? Flour, soft flour tortilla, soft corn tortilla, or the hard corn tortilla? I hate the hard corn tortilla. It's gotta be the soft corn tortilla. But flour's good. That fish taco is good, man. Mm. Great toppings, fantastic sauce. Way to go. The chefs here A Bent Taco. I've been wanting to come back for two years, ever since Paul and I had it. I thought to myself, I gotta come back here, do a stealth camp and eat tacos. That's what I thought. All right, so this is the best seller. I don't think I'll be able to fold that properly. There's three huge pieces of cauliflower on there. Look at this. I can't pick that up. Can you guys see that? I think you can, kind of. That yeah, you can't fold that up. It's just not gonna happen. I think I have to actually take out one of the cauliflowers. Oh yeah, look at that. It's like deep fried cauliflower, buffalo style. Mmm. Very tasty. There's guacamole on the bottom. Well, that's really good, man. No wonder that's a top seller. I think I prefer fish tacos over this, but this is definitely, this is, I, I now I understand why it's uh, their number one seller. Mmm. <laughs> now, she's right. It's better than the fish taco. Next up is the meat and potatoes. Look at this pink sauce. Don't know exactly what the pink sauce is. But look at that meat. It is glistening. Oh, and I guess that's the potatoes on top. Looks like little little deep fried potato chunks. This one looks easier to fold. I love the artistic styles that all these people that make tacos have and how they put it together. The presentation always looks amazing. Mm -hmm. Wow. Ooh. Flavor punch to the back of the throat. That's incredible. That's like a beef brisket thing. Oh, that is really good. Holy schmoly. Okay, now I'm confused. <laughs> They're all good. Here's an extreme close up of the chicken tanga. Look at that sauce all over the place. Chunks of chicken green onion lettuce definitely when they have like shredded things 
it's much easier to be able to uh, fold and eat. I always, always try to pinch the end so all the stuff doesn't come out. It doesn't always work. Not bad. The flavor of that chicken sauce is very, very good. Mmm. It's fresh chicken. More cleanup. All four of these tacos are amazing. Uh, if I came back again next week, I'd probably want to order exactly the same thing. I'm not kidding. Uh, it is nice to go from one to the other. Uh, you're getting all these flavor experiences throughout your meal. Uh, I, again, uh, thank you very much, Bent Taco, for uh, letting me get away with this because I really didn't want the, the only things you can do on the takeout menu. And I'm so glad I got to do your fish taco again. So I'm going to polish the rest of this off and my pop. Then maybe we'll go for a bike ride. And then we'll have to find a place somewhere in this town to stealth camp tonight. And then get a good night's sleep. I thought I'd come back down to the pier. And enjoy the sunset from my camper van because the sun's gonna set over there as you can see I got a few things I probably shouldn't have brought my bike but I think I definitely want to go for a bike ride later but uh, let me show you the fillets the problem right now is my side door doesn't work so I have to crawl in through the back which is fine so Brought my cooler, luckily. Sleeping bag, got the jackery, keeping my fish cold. Let's open this up. There they are, look at those fish fillets. There's six of them all together, I believe. Nice and cold in there. Now it lasts me till tomorrow. Oh, that's three, four, five, six, seven. So I got seven fillets in there. Keep that nice and tight and uh, yeah, we'll sit back here, watch the sunset. I don't think I can stealth camp here. You have to pay for parking. Hey, nice vet. Okay. So, yeah. The only problem with me doing what I did shooting with Carl is I have extra clothes and stuff. And so I'm going to have to do a little bit of a tidy up. There goes the vet. They're out of here. What would be your preferred color of vet? That's not bad. Not bad at all. Reorganized a bit. I'll probably put the backpack on here since I'm not gonna probably put anything else in here. I won't need this space anymore. Uh, this is my helmet for my bike, which could go there. And uh, so we'll put this camera bag and all my special essentials. There's a gentleman who owns his own helicopter coming home. I don't think I can see his house from here. Yeah, this is landing. Is that his house? That's where he lands the helicopter, I think. Yeah. Pretty much all organized. Got my little power bank to keep my phone charged. Um, just looking at the Jackery, I'm guessing because the cooler is pretty much empty and only has the fish in it. I might have to go and buy a bag of ice because the jackery is already down to 67% uh, from 100%. This cooler is actually pulling 48 watts. So I just don't think it's gonna last till uh, tomorrow, probably until one o'clock. So I'll probably die somewhere in the middle of the night. Um, yeah, I should have brought the 1500 watt uh, jackery, but that's what I grabbed. I was, again, I was trying to think about space. And uh, this is the smallest one. And again, I thought it was going to be fine. Um, so we'll probably, it's going to relax for a little bit for sure. It's only uh, 5.45. And uh, then we'll go grab some ice. Um, but we'll wait for the sun to go down a little bit.
Thank you. Somebody ordered slushies through Uber? Yeah, yeah. Wow. When you got a craving, I guess, eh? How much is a slushie? Uh, I'll double check for you. <laughs> I was curious how much they got charged through Uber. I reckon probably somewhere in 11 bucks ballpark. Wow. Somebody ordered three Slurpees <laughs> through, through uh, Urb, Uber. It would have cost them through Uber. So it would have cost them two ninety nine if they came in and bought it, but it's going to cost them over $11. So Maybe they're drinking. That's a good. That's a good idea if they're drinking. Yeah. Can I get a bag of ice, please? Sure. Just the ice. Yeah. yeah. Thank you very much, sir. Back to the park. Sunset time. Yep, just Rusty and me. Well, the sunset was amazing. And uh, now we gotta go find a spot before it gets too dark, locate the spot, and then go into stealth mode, get ready for bed. It's um, 20 to eight. Oh, the moon's straight ahead of us. It's uh, 20 to eight, but we need to find our spot, get everything all stealthed up, and then maybe go for one more walk, and then hit the hay. Okay, I found a spot. It's a gas station right on the main road. So I think that's a good idea. There's a gas station there. There's this gas station. I'm not sure if either of them are open 24 hours. If they are, then it's good if there's an emergency bathroom break. But I do have my pee bottles, so I don't have to uh, get out for that. There's McDonald's over there too. They're probably open late. And the bulk barns there, but I'm just gonna stay at this gas station right here and I'll uh, face away from them and uh, let's set up our stealth windows. So I'm kind of all stealthed out, ready to go. This is definitely gonna, well, let's keep it on low. Don't need it pretty much any higher than that. Uh, but that is definitely gonna keep me cool tonight. It's nice to have circulation in here. I also have the uh, damp rid, which is like a moisture uh, reducing stuff that it's like in a jug and I have that under the front seat. I used to have two in here, but I put one in the other van. Well guys, I'm gonna hit the hay. Uh, I gotta get up early in the morning. Do my bike ride, freshen up, and then we're going to be hitting up a mom and pop breakfast place in town that a friend of mine suggested. I gave him a quick uh, message on Messenger. His name's uh, Mike, and Mike said one of his favorite places to eat breakfast is a place called uh, Alfron. It's uh, a German place, and they're open, I think, from 9 o'clock on, uh, but we'll uh, hit them up for our breakfast, and they have something on there called uh, Eggs and Schnitzel. 
So I can't wait for that. So uh, have a good night and we'll see you in the morning. morning it is 7 14 Thursday September 8th and uh, I slept really well good night's sleep uh, I think again next time I'll try to park a little bit farther away from a main road just for that reason right there big trucks motorcycles screaming by early in the morning so uh, but other than that it was a good night's sleep so the sun is rising, as you can see. I'm gonna take all the stuff down, take all of our stuff down, and then uh, we will get the bike out, go for a bike ride, and uh, then we'll go have breakfast. Cool? Let's go. Time to get changed. All changed, ready to go. I figured we'd just drive over to Alforn's and uh, then from there I'll go for my bike ride and when I get back, then we'll have breakfast. Change of plans again. I figured I'd just park at the McDonald's across the street and then go to the end of the pier, do the downtown area again, and uh, then I'll come back here and then we'll go to breakfast. <music> to the opposite side of the terminal and it looks like the bridge is out <laughs> somebody if you uh, live in this area or know anything about why this bridge got destroyed because it's gone it's like it's not like it fell over it's somebody took it because <laughs> all the pilings are gone the bridge is gone there's benches down there you can see benches and wow that may be a part of it Hmm. Time to circle back, get some breakfast. Hey, nice car. Breakfast time. There it is, Alforn Restaurant. Open daily, 7 a.m. till noon for breakfast. So they're open till 10 o'clock. Cool. A lot of stickers. Hello, how are you? Nope. All right, how are you doing? Just one. Um, can I get stuff to go? Of course. Okay. I'm gonna do your, uh, I, t I was told to try your eggs and schnitzel. Schnitzel and eggs, how do you want the eggs? 
Up, please. Sunny side. All right, and white or rye? Uh, let's go rye. We have a beautiful model dry. You won't go wrong with that one. All right. Cash or card? Ca uh, card. 1915. That's a cool place you got here. Oh, you should walk around while you're waiting for the food. Yeah. It's it's 40 years of collections. Nice. <laughs> so big you have to put the eggs on top right? of course that looks awesome thank enjoy you. sweetheart i will thank you have a great day you too let's look at that one more time oh boy yeah my buddy mike he owns a place up here a chalet and uh so i gave him a quick message last night and said what is your favorite breakfast place and he said Al Franz and, and I'm like well what is your favorite item at Al Franz and he said the schnitzel and eggs eggs and schnitzel and then she just said that this marble rye is unbelievable got my own knife and fork right here ready to go all right ladies and gentlemen going in for the extreme close-up all right of ladies and gentlemen going in for the extreme close-up of here this at Al Franz eggs and schnitzel look at those perfect Al Franz. Look at sunny those perfect. side eggs let sunny us know in the comments eggs. below what's your favorite egg. Sunny side over below. easy your over egg? hard. Sunny what? side over and easy check that over out. hard. What? She said the marble rye is fantastic. She said the marble rye. We got is a fantastic. wedge of lemon, which I'm gonna probably. I don't know if I'm gonna put that on. Maybe if I put that on. Eat my eggs uh, up first. If I uh, with a bit of the schnitzel and then squeeze the lemon on because lemon on schnitzel is the bomb. Are you guys ready? For those of you who are interested, the schnitzel and eggs is $16.95 plus uh, the tax and the tip came to $22.59. Got our knife and fork. We've got our napkins in our special napkin holder. All right. It's, oh, yeah. I was going to do this bread, a little bit of bread first. Mmm. Marble rye. Fantastic. Huge slices too, eh? Look at that. It's one big slice of bread. That's a big schnitzel too. Mmm. So she said they had it all pounded out. I forgot to ask her if it's a uh, veal or pork. Might be able to tell. I'm gonna move my bread over because it's in the way. Oh, there's some hash browns on the bottom too. Check that out. Some nice golden hash browns right there. Oh no, they're not hash browns. Oh my gosh, what are they called? Um, Swiss Rosh tea. I have to look it up. I couldn't. I couldn't remember. I looked it up last night. And I'm not sure if it's, they're calling it Swiss Rosti because it's their Swiss style of making it or if they put Swiss cheese in it, but it doesn't look like they have any cheese in it. So maybe it's just the style in which they create their Rosti. I think it's pronounced Rusti and it's basically fried potatoes, basically. Let's get a piece of that schnitzel going first. It looks like it's veal. Mmm. Very nice. I want to squeeze lemon all over it. It's funny. I totally forgot about the Rushdi. Kind of look it up, find out what it was. Never had it before. I've had fried potatoes and hash browns. They're kind of like hash browns, basically. And depending on how you make it and what potato you use, Depends if it's crunchy or soggy. Woo! Whoa! Woo! Volcano hot! Woo! Potatoes hold their heat. Uh, 
Okay, I'm going to eat half of the schnitzel with the eggs and the other half I'm going to eat with the lemon because that's how I do things. Yeah, it's, it's got to be veal, man. It's got to be. It's got to be. I'll find out. All right. Let's do a little bit of egg. A little bit of schnitzel. Hope I don't cut through this cardboard. Oh, look at that. Nice. Mmm. Woo. <laughs> Woo. Woo. Squeeze that lemon. Oh yeah, it's spraying everywhere. Look at that. You gotta drip it on soak. That schnitzel, don't worry about the pits, the seeds, we'll get them out later. But you gotta get all that schnitzel, all that breading on that schnitzel. It's basically either pounded pork, chicken, or veal is what they usually make schnitzel out of. And uh, they pound it so it's really thin, cooks fast, you deep fry it. Oh yeah, I haven't had schnitzel in so long. The, one of my favorite places in, in uh, Newmarket just closed down. I'm not sure if they sold or they closed down, but no more schnitzel in Newmarket, unfortunately. Okay, here we go. Schnitzel and lemon for breakfast. <laughs> Back to the eggs and schnitzel. Schnitzel and eggs. This time I'm going to try a little bit of Rushdi. Egg and schnitzel, that's a mouthful right there. But I got everything in it. It's actually steaming. Maybe that's a mistake. Hmm. I always make mistakes. Mmm. Mmm. Really hot, but very, very tasty. When you do all three of them in combination, it is fabulous. Thanks, Mike, for letting me know about this place. And this is why I love the mom and pop shops. So good. A few more bites and this thing's gone. If you come to this restaurant, I totally recommend uh, kind of dividing up that veal and uh, eating half of it with the eggs and the rushti and uh, the other half doing it with the lemon because straight up lemon on... Uh, Veal is just fantastic. Little more lemon. All right, guys, last bite of this amazing breakfast here in Collingwood. I'm going to dedicate this bite, this last bite, to all those men and women out there who love to watch my videos at 1 o'clock in the morning. We don't know why you do, but you do. This last bite is just for you. Cheers. Mmm. I'm going to need a nap. I'm going to zip back in there and see if they have a chicken schnitzel to bring home to the wife. All right, guys. Uh, I went back in there and got a chicken schnitzel for my wife. It turns out they do only pork and chicken. They don't usually do uh, chicken at, for breakfast, but uh, luckily they, they helped me out and, and uh, whipped one up. The sun's going to come through any second now. There we go. All right, guys, thanks for hanging out with me on this stealth camp. I will be doing many, many more stealth camps in the future. Please leave uh, recommendations and uh, ideas that you'd like me to do uh, in your towns, uh, provinces, states, countries, and I'll see what I can do. Uh, obviously, I'm going to be sticking with Rusty closer to Ontario. So if you guys have uh, recommendations of, again, towns, restaurants your favorite restaurant your favorite meal at that restaurant just like mike told me about this place uh that would be fantastic and i'll try to uh, shout everybody out like my buddy mike all right guys uh thank you very much to every single one of you guys for watching my videos and making this possible and thank you very much to all my channel members for your monthly support and my supporters over on patreon you guys rock if you enjoyed my video and you want to show your support for me doing these videos just for you, hit it with a thumbs up. Ding, da, ding, 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 ding. But if you're still hungry for more, check out the stealth camping videos I put down over there. We'll see you over there. Bring your hunger.